Welcome to the lab for module 6 of course 10981. In this lab we'll actually have a look at creating some clouds within the virtual machine manager console. We will then uh, create them both via the console itself and using PowerShell. We'll then create ro user roles to provide access to those clouds and assign the permissions to be able to then consume the resources in those clouds. So straight into the virtual machine manager console we'll go to the VMs and services panel and we'll use the create cloud tool from the ribbon. So first page pretty sta standard supplier name and supplier des description. So we'll call ours PC Contoso hyphen production. The next page you get asked about the physical resources that you want to expose. So we're just going to select the Contoso container so potentially anything that gets provisioned could be on any host you can specify the networks you'd like them to be able to consume depending which resources and if you was using complex templates you could then obviously supply load balancers and virtual IP templates. The port classifications allow us to define what port types of networking we want to use and also storage obviously what storage can be consumed by the people that build virtual machines. The library tab allows us to define if they can actually store virtual machines and which read-only library shares. So can they upload virtual machines when not needed and the read-only library shares what resources can they use like for example ISOs. Capacity obviously allows us to define quotas so we can restrict what provision, uh, they can provision and then the capability profiles allow us to define the type of virtualization uh, host that they can consume. The rep groups are to do with uh, replicating uh, Hyper-V virtual machines when using Azure so we can ignore that and then we just get a summary of the configuration. So we'll just complete that and we'll see that the cloud creates very quickly and the job uh, happens very very fast. So we should hopefully see that we now have a uh, new cloud which will be running across the hosts that are in Contoso which will obviously include our cluster so effectively the LUN host 1 and LUN host 2. So we should see that configuration quite clearly. So we'll just refresh to make sure that we're all up to date. So we'll switch over to the VMs and services panel and we'll move one of our existing VMs into the cloud that we've just created. So we've gone to the VMs view, we will select a virtual machine, so we'll select the LUN WU1, go to its properties and we will then actually just show that we can move a virtual machine into an existing cloud if we need to. So machines don't have to be provisioned into clouds, um, they can be added to clouds after the event, they can actually be removed from clouds once you've actually put them in. Also this change doesn't have to happen while the machine is in a powered off state even though it's a virtual machine that I've actually moved uh, while it's been powered off. It could have equally been a machine that was running and it would have had no effect on the uh, the availability of the system, there would have been no impact as far as the users are concerned. So we'll switch just across and we can see the virtual machine sitting inside that cloud now. So we'll just create a second cloud, so this time PC a datum dot produ uh, hyphen production and again we could put an appropriate description in and we can assign the resources again. So again the physical resources uh, these machines can be built on the networking they, they can consume, any load balancing, same as before. Port classification, so again, you know, when they specify templates, we can make sure we bind everything to the correct networks and they get the correct throughput and rules that we want. Same for storage, and same for the library resources again as well. So again, if we want to prevent ISO, pre present ISOs to them and so on. Again, obviously the quotering, you can define how you want to limit what people can provision. Obviously the first quota limit you hit then will prevent you provisioning any additional resources. So we'll just look at the script that actually gets created at this point. So what we can then do is we can obviously then happily take that script and use it for other purposes. So we'll just save the script. So we'll actually have a create um, private cloud script and then it would be quite easy to ad edit the script for specific requirements or you could obviously start to parameterize the script quite easily. So we'll just save that script as our create private cloud script. Close that down and we'll just press cancel to the wizard so that 
it doesn't actually go and create the cloud for us. So if we just jump into Explorer, let's go and edit that PowerShell script. So we'll take our existing Explorer window, we'll find the PowerShell script we've just created, and we'll open it in the PowerShell ISE. One of the things to watch out for with PowerShell when using Virtual Machine Manager is these job groups. The job group ID is used to link a series of related commands together. One of the problems you can have when just cutting and pasting a PowerShell script from Virtual Machine Manager is it limits concurrency of the code because they all end up having the same job group ID. So one of the things that you often have to do is actually generate new job IDs and then use that in your script. So the job IDs are a GUID, so PowerShell makes it very easy for us to generate new GUID IDs. So we can just see we're setting the dollar job group ID equals GUID colon colon new GUID ID open close bracket dot to string and then open close bracket so what you can now do is any place where you see the hyphen job group parameter we can effectively replace that with the dollar job group ID and therefore when we run this script what will now actually happen is the dollar job group ID value will actually get put into that space so therefore that ensures that if you run this script multiple times at the same time each iteration uh, understands uh, which copy owns which sets of variables and parameters that you're setting and so on so it allows you to have um, a, a scalability which uh, you wouldn't get without changing this you'd have to run instances serially which obviously wouldn't scale very well so we're just going to uh, put the variable in here so we've just replaced that number obviously you could do sort of a search and replace uh, if you want to quite happily um, but it, uh, depending on how many of them you've got you've got to change so we haven't got too many and using the ISC because of the IntelliSense as soon as you start typing in the sort of dollar J it then actually shows it in the list and you can just press enter so it'll plug that value into the, the script quite happily so you can see that we don't have actually have any others to set so we can effectively save that and that now becomes a reusable script um, you know, so the one thing we might want to do is obviously parameterize names um, things like the cloud name could be passed in as a parameter for example okay so we'll just clean up our desktop a little bit open a virtual machine manager PowerShell prompt now with PowerShell today you don't need to open a specific um, PowerShell prompt to run ex extension commands obviously with auto load of modules any PowerShell prompt will do but this has loaded all the virtual machine manager commands for us automatically so we'll just move to the root of drive C and we'll then go and run our create private cloud PowerShell script so the script will run very very quickly and you'll see we'll get some results back and effectively tells us at the top we've created our cloud called PC hyphen a datum hyphen production and if we go into the cloud section we can actually see that cloud in existence so that cloud has no virtual machines whereas the Contoso cloud has the virtual machine we manually moved into that cloud early on in this lab so we've created our clouds so the next thing we need to do is, is start looking at delegating administration to them and access to them so we use the create user role in the settings uh, panel uh, so we'll give the role a name so the Contoso fabric you know, a, a administrator and then when we get to the role page you have a selection of roles you can pick from so we're going to leave it as fabric um, obviously members you can define who's a member of this role I'm not going to add anybody at this time and then you can control basically which objects they can have scope control over so by giving them access to the Contoso cloud they can manage the fabric elements inside the Contoso cloud we're going to define the library server which can be used for provisioning and storing and then run as accounts which obviously can be used for anything from joining domains to running custom commands and so on so we'll complete that and we'll just jump across to the jobs window but actually creating user roles a little bit like creating clouds the jobs run very very quickly so generally about a second so no surprise when we get over to the jobs window that the roles already been created if we just jump back to the PowerShell prompt, what we can also do is obviously we can do these sorts of things quite easily uh, using PowerShell. So we'll just connect across to the repository of all of our scripts on LUN DC1 and we'll actually have a look at some scripts that we've got. So we'll just go into the uh, module 6 lab files folder and 
we'll actually just have a look at one of the scripts that's actually in there. So this is going to be the application administrator role. So when we actually have a look at this, we can see that we specify the uh, cloud that you're going to have uh, access to. You can actually see that we can apply quotas, so we can limit what you can have access to, the uh, description, the name, as well as obviously features like um, um, the run as accounts and so on can also be defined. Okay, notice the job group ID uh, being used for controlling the GUID ID. So we will just go and run that PowerShell command. Okay, and hopefully we'll see that will go off and create our new role for us. Okay, so we've got our new role created. So go to the settings, into security, user roles, and we should see that we have our Contoso application administrator. So this is a self-service user. So this allows them to potentially do anything from create virtual machines to connect and manage those virtual machines. The key thing here is they have no access to the physical um, and they're uh, often highly quoted. So in the PowerShell we didn't had, add any members so we can obviously easily add members. You can take obviously members away um, very very easily as part of the, the configuration if you want to. So we'll just go and add John into the membership list and, and we'll save that change. Again this will happen uh, very very quickly. Okay so pretty straightforward. If you wanted to review the permissions then obviously pretty straightforward to actually come to the permissions tab as well look at the permissions that have been set and also obviously add or take permissions away so as we see no permissions have been set so we'll just give the ability to start and shut down virtual machines in this instance so looking at the properties of the virtual machine that's in the Contoso production cloud if we come to the access okay what we can now do is we can actually effectively define an owner okay so we can attach that to a user so we can set John so one of the things that hasn't happened just as, as, as an interesting experience is giving the user access to the cloud hasn't automatically given them access to the virtual machines that were already in there okay we don't assume because if you give them to the cloud anything that's in there you want them to have access to and one of the reasons for that is clouds can actually be subdivided uh, between teams um, so you can actually create a shared cloud but still provide tenant isolation between each of those clouds so we're just actually going to run the virtual machine manager user interface as John so we're going to sign in as effectively being a self-service user just to see what the experience difference is so signing in as John we'll just need to go and specify the name of the virtual machine manager console so VMM plus one obviously running on the default port of 8100 so we'll just take a few seconds for the virtual machine manager console to load okay now you see here interesting just from the point of view of a, an experience point of view because of how we're running the console it's running on a server and so on rather than on a workstation machine we're actually getting a warning here um, with reference to the fact that we can't access an object that the console needs to load okay so what we're actually going to do is we're just going to close the console down and we're actually going to go and make a, a small permissions change inside the file system so this is something that you, you do suffer with with add-ons in the console and those sort of things and it, I say it's predominantly because we're running it on a, a, a workstation oh, sorry, a server based operating system rather than on a um, workstation operating system so if we just go into the properties of the add-in pipeline folder underneath the bin folder in virtual machine manager you can see only administrators can have access to it so we're just going to go and change the security for that folder you could obviously put a group in here uh, you could put individual users in uh, it's, it's entirely up to you how you do it maybe what you would do in, if you was having people remotely connecting into a server to use the virtual machine manager console maybe what you do is create a um, virtual machine manager users group and actually give that group permissions to that particular folder so let's launch the console again in exactly the same way as we launched it just now so we'll do a run as we'll sign in as John Doe and hopefully we connect this time and we don't get the error message so the first 
key thing that you'll notice on the left hand side is the reduction in the number of buttons so significantly we don't have the fabric button we don't have the administration button also in the VMs and services you can see the all host sections gone so um, and now we've gone into the clouds you can only see the production uh, cloud for Contoso you couldn't see the datum cloud you can also see that obviously we have the permissions to power machine on because we gave John the ability to start machines if you right click you can see John's got the ability to shut it down but if you look at just key other options for example there is no um, manage checkpoints for example so there's a limit to what John effectively can do based on the permissions that have been allocated to him so in this lab we saw how to create private clouds using the virtual machine manager console we created them using PowerShell and learned how to adapt the PowerShell script we then created roles and assigned to those user roles thank you